Schrodinger was a man that Einstein really loved because of his personal life. Uh, uh, Schrodinger's wife used to uh, reward him when he had great results. Uh, she would introduce him to uh, really nice twins to go off to the mountain with and stuff. They said about Schrodinger when he came to uh, Oxford in the 1930s, to arrive at Oxford with one wife is bad enough. To arrive with two, really excessive. So Schrodinger had this wild sort of bohemian life, which Einstein liked. That's one reason Einstein grew his hair like that. When he was young, he was actually kind of dishy. He was a good-looking guy. When he was rowing, people said, oh, you know, you're really, really muscly and stuff. And he would uh, sail and row and stuff. But later in bourgeois Berlin in the 1920s, he wanted to fight that, to say, Ugh, you don't have to line up and be exactly like that. His, his second wife was incredibly particular. Albert, I don't think that's quite the right way to hold our forks, that sort of thing. So he did the hair as a sort of resistance. So he liked Schrodinger, and the two men were really good friends. And they collaborated in the mid-1930s by letter. Schrodinger had gotten a job in Dublin, of all places. It turns out the guy who ran Ireland at the time, De Valera, had studied mathematics. So he respected Schrodinger. And in their correspondence, they came up with this notion. It turns out very often people come up with a notion to disprove a theory, and that notion is really good. And the reason is we don't like humiliation, we don't like fear. A friend of mine was a very successful a TV and film writer and producer, and he was really good. Then when he got a lot of money, he sort of lost his creativity. And he tried all sorts of ways to get his creativity back. He tried working with bright young people, going to museums, working in different fields, none of it worked. And then his business partner ripped him off, and boy was he motivated. He started writing terrific stuff. So Einstein couldn't believe, still dislike the fact that he'd been pushed to the side. So that brought up his creativity to a real high level. You know, if you're fired from a company, you want to show them. You're full of energy, you have to show them. So he came up with, in correspondence with Schrodinger, Schrodinger was involved a little bit, um, with this notion of Heisenberg's cat, that uh, if, if, I, if there's no way whatsoever to predict if a certain particle's going to decay this way or decay that way, um, then the following curious effect happens. And, I'm uh, sorry, suppose you can't predict which way it's going to go, and you will only know, and it only Will you only know or will it only happen once you look at it? Suppose that particle's inside a box. Suppose the poor cat is inside the box. Suppose a large gun. You see the viciousness of quiet, often vegetarian physicists. They like, should the gun have impaling hooks? You know, should there be a little trap door underneath it and stuff? And suppose if the particle decays and goes this way, nothing happens, the cat walks around. Da -da 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 -da. If the particle decays and goes that way, a big gun blasts it to smithereens, right? Um, in uh, uh, a standard interpretation of quantum mechanics, it not only do you not only know until you open the box which way the particles decayed, it hasn't, you can't, uh, sorry to say, it hasn't happened. Um, it's ambiguous until, uh, until you open it and look, that the actually observation helps create it. Einstein thought that was insane, but yet a lot of evidence, uh, again, I'm being metaphorical about it, a lot of evidence backed it up. The question, of course, is Einstein said, well, in that case, is the cat alive or dead before you open the box, right? We don't know which way the particle went and if the trigger was pulled or not. So is the cat alive or dead? And clearly it can't be in a superposition of two states, half dead and, and half alive. On the other hand, if any of you have ever taken the Northern Line in London at about 8 a.m., you understand many people can be in that superposition of two states, half dead and half alive. So that was a short, and they, they came up with that notion to sort of disprove quantum mechanics. 